the Bible? Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. That's right, brothers and sisters, the Hebrew and Bible Academy, you are invited. I'm here, Elder Rikar Shiar here, going into the Sabbath. That's right. I'm back with our what? Weekly Patreon updates, okay? Of course, the Holy Days took up the majority of the seventh month, just like every year, okay? We went from the, the, remote, the memorial blowing of the trumpets. Ten days later, on the tenth day, nine days later, on the tenth day of the seventh month, it's what the Jewish religion calls Rosh Hashanah, okay? Well, Rosh Hashanah is really the, the blowing of the trumpets, the beginning of the seventh month, okay? Jewish people are currently in their Rosh Hashanah, and some people ask, well, how is it that what they're doing being Jews and what we're doing being Israelites or Jews, why is that so different? Well, because modern day Judaism calculates time according to the moon. Okay. Now, when you look at the ancients, before the Romans came on the scene, before Babylon was destroyed, by the Babylonian and Assyrians, folks. We were warned, even Moses was told in the book of Jubilees, do not calculate time with the moon. It'll throw off time. It'll throw off, that's right, the right holy days. It'll throw off prophecy, okay? So you're not supposed to calculate time Strictly using the moon, and it's at the end of the day, it's mathematics. Okay, the moon come in 10 days early every year. Okay, which means a lunar cycle is 354 days. All right, so think about that. If our so-called Julian calendar is giving us 365 and the moon gives you a 354 cycle, then that means the days and holy days will switch every year. That's wrong. And the Most High told Moses not to do that. Okay? So you wonder why they're doing Rosh Hashanah and we, we've been in our seventh month already. Well, because they're dealing with the cycle of the, the moon for the calculation of their holy days. That's why. Okay. Now they, a lot of, a lot of people just follow the traditions of it. You have even, you know, people who are secular Jewish people who don't follow the religion at all, but just deal with the traditional part of it and come together for the holy days or what have you. And some of people don't even care as long as they have an opportunity to come together with family, but all in all, you need to understand why our trumpets or Rosh Hashanah is entirely different when it comes to time. Okay. We are keeping the time before the Babylonians came in, switched things up. And, and then subsequent to that, the priesthood went off. Okay. 
and they began, our people began to follow the moon too. And this is why the Most High took down our priesthood. One of the reasons. Okay. So Noah knew, Enoch understood, even Moses understood that we were not supposed to calculate time according to the moon. The moon and the sun works in conjunction. That's right. The moon follows the sun through gates. That's right. For courses of time. All right. You cannot keep time with one hand. Okay. They must work together simultaneously. Moon follows the sun. All right. So I wanted to give you some insight to why, so that you are all not confused to why Jewish people are following days on a separate time, as well as Hebrews. Modern Hebrews, you know, and it's not entirely their fault, began to follow the traditions of modern day Judaism when it comes to following the holy days. They walked away from Sunday worship. Great. But what they didn't know is that they were following something else that was Babylonian. Even though you're calling it Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread by name, so, so are those who are following it under Judaism or Jewish people. It doesn't mean you're following the day that was appointed by the God of Israel. OK, hence the reason why we did give you a calendar to be able to calculate to get right back on time. All right. So I wanted to put that out there real quick. All right. And also, I, I will be teaching the secrets of the times. In this academy, how to calculate time according to God, how to use the Bible so that you are not deceived, because there's many different ideologies and everyone sounds equally convincing. Most people sound equally convincing because their teacher taught them how to. Uh, uh, bring forth certain information, okay, according to that, that doctrinal structure, which is understood. So, but you must understand what's right, regardless of how convincing some may be, okay? Which leads me to our topic today, leaning into Patreon, okay? Uh, avoid deception according to the Bible. All right. And I'm going to talk about that before transitioning over on Patreon, where we'll immediately begin to take phone calls leading into the Hebrew and Bible Academy week one that starts this Sunday, October 1st. All right. Now, why is it so important? I'm going to go into that in a moment. But in the Academy, as you can see, I have one of the better Bibles out there. It's one of the the best Bibles I've had It's called the Holy Bible, King James Version, Cambridge, and it has the Apocrypha in it. It's one of the best Bibles I've ever had. Right. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. It has the full Bible intact with Apocrypha. That's number one. Great. So you don't need to buy yourself a separate Apocrypha. OK, don't listen to the enemies out there who are telling you the Apocrypha isn't spiritually inspired by Christ. They'll tell us that in the hood while the Catholics have the Apocrypha in their Bible. So what are they what are they actually trying to conceal from us? OK, so how is it not spiritually inspired when we go into it in our neighborhoods? But Catholics have it in their Bible. So what are they trying to conceal from us? Number one, they're trying to conceal that without the Apocrypha, right, you will not have a complete King James Version Bible. And again, throw every other version out that came after King James Version. Any version that came after King James Version is a deception. Throw it out. OK, now there's books. That's right. That we're that we authored that not authored more. So we were off the authors to the prophets. But we also compiled different Bibles. And it was our people who did that. Tinsdale was an Israelite. He was a black man. One of the first Bibles compiled. The Septuagint, when during the time of the transition, when the Greeks came into power, 
That's right. We had our uh, our, our um, uh, uh, the authority of the Hebrews. OK, we we began to translate that into the Greek so that the Greeks can give get some understanding of our culture, history and laws. And that's the Septuagint. So the Septuag Septuagint is good. The Tinsdale Bible is is good because it also breaks down other things uh, uh, when it comes to understanding that deception when they tried to put Ruddy or try to prove that David was a so-called white man in the later text. Well, in the Tinsdale Bible, it tell you that King David was a brown skinned man. Was a brown skinned man, not that we wouldn't have respected David if he was white, but why lie to the people? Right. So. I digress because I got to get ready for Patreon, but before I do that, let me get into what we're going to talk about in the academy and what we're going to be able to conversate about on the phones uh, with our Patreon members. I love this particular book in, in, in particular, the Cambridge, because not only does it have the Bible with the Apocrypha, right? It also has a center column reference for those who can see it. Let me get the glare out of it here. Yeah, let me tilt it here and get the glare. You can see there's a center column reference here. A center column reference right there in the middle. Right? See that? See those little scribbles in the middle? They mean something. They absolutely mean something, right? They, what this does is allow you to get the context by precepting uh, on any particular verse. Okay. It'll give you a number with a letter next to it or a letter. It'll give you a number to give you some context as far as being able to read commentary or whatever the case is or meaning of a word. But also there's letters there that refers one to another part of the book to give a particular precept context. Why am I going here? Because, like I've mentioned today, avoid deceptive uh, deception according to the Bible. Okay, because there's many, what? There's many doctrines, ideologies, philosophies, and many brothers and sisters don't even know why some of these religions were created, like Jehovah Witness, uh, Seventh-day Adventist. What was the political landscape? What was their objective against those they were colonizing and others, Right. And was there some type of what you would call white supremacy's views to try to keep certain things from us to make us believe that they were the people? Right. But when you use these precepts, you get the context outside of what? Outside of the social engineering of modern day religion. You're just getting the text as it is written and you're following the word according to God. And that's the point. So that. That transcends denominations, that transcends doctrine, what church someone comes from. It doesn't matter because each denomination have placed people in a box controlled by a cult leader, such as like Charles Taze Russell. That's right. He's the father of the Jehovah Witness. So no one can grow beyond Charles Taze Russell, a cult satanic mind. The same thing when it comes to Joseph Smith, uh, uh, the Church of Latter-day Saints. Well, they pigeonhole people into what? A doctrine so that if you believe anything according to the Bible outside of that doctrine, they'll call you heresy. When not, you're, that's not heresy or heretic. You are actually doing what? Fighting your programming by going with the Bible as it is written. And this, has, and this alone will have us break out of this Baptist ideology that have enslaved, have slaved us, the so-called Edomite ideology, the Roman uh, ideology, the Roman Catholic ideology. It breaks us free to be able to what? Connect with God as God intended. And what I'm going to do in this academy, the first 10 minutes before going into the lesson, I'm going to show brothers and sisters how to go into the Bible. That's right. And break down and understand precepts. All right. Therefore, if you're reading the Bible, even without a teacher, 
it'll still give you some level of guideline to stay within the parameters of the Bible's narrative. First 10 minutes, how to break down precepts. I'm going to take a picture, show it up there, have it there, split screen. We're going to go over it. We're going to class in this academy. And it's not about you just following and learning from us. I need to know that you're actually obtaining the information and you're growing even from where we're teaching you. As long as you study the show yourself approved, we can guide you in the right space so that who knows, one day all of this technology could be gone and you'll still have the tools to stay within the parameters or the narrative God intended for those who believe in him. OK, and it'll strengthen your understanding of this powerful book called the Bible. That's number one. So I'm going to make sure I make a concerted effort to show brothers and sisters how to precept. Now, why am I going here? Why am I going here? Right. Let me show you something here. Let me show. Let's go to Colossians 2 and 18 real quick. Let's go over here to Colossians 2 and 18. Let me read this. Right. I read this for you, right? Colossians 2 and 18 in the epistles. See, the disciples were very keen on warning brothers and sisters. Warning brothers and sisters of certain deceivers out there who may sound convincing. I'm going to help you all today, even though this is just an update, even for those who are not on Patreon or maybe going into the academy or may not, you're going to get some key information that's going to put you in line of how you should view those who claim to believe in God or the Bible today, right? I'm going to I'm I'm give you some insight on how to screen others who claim they believe in the word of God. Colossians 2 and 8 reads, Let no man beguile you of your reward. Your reward is an agreement between what? Through your obedience with God, with the creator whom we believe in, there's a reward, a personal reward that's given directly to you that has nothing to do with anyone else. And this is why Paul was when he wrote these letters, he was saying, listen, don't let no man trick you. Beguile means trick you from your reward. Right. That means someone's coming in with another doctrine to steer you off of the path Christ put you on. Christ called you to this work as well as any other individual, including teachers. And you have to make sure that no teacher comes into play or any person comes into play to trick you off of the path Christ put us on or placed you on. Be very careful, right? So once you begin to understand, I'm an Israelite, understand Christ and others, Satan is looking to trick us now that he cannot trick us concerning who we are anymore. Through doctrine, he's going to try to frustrate us to a degree that what? We'll give up altogether. And that's the danger of coming into the light and understanding with so many different religions, ideologies, including differences amongst Israelites. Right? So it's written here. Let no man trick you or beguile you of your reward. Now, how can someone trick you? Listen. In a voluntary humility. Let's focus on what that is. Usually when you find the most high. Right. There's an excitement. Right. And then. There, there's a, a humbling spirit that comes with it. that The most high chose you to see. In a world filled with darkness, right? Right? So now you're volunteering yourself to receive information. You want to just absorb everything that's coming. Well, guess what, folks? It also leaves one vulnerable for a deceiver. The last thing you believe is the person that's giving you the word of God or some insight has a hidden agenda to move you off the path. So how... Can I weigh this? I want to be excited. I, you know, I don't, I don't like to operate in trepidation and being standoffish, right? How do, I, how do I balance this, right? 
How do I balance this to not be disappointed? Well, Paul broke it down. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility. That means you're wide open now. You're trusting. But here's the key. And worshiping. Listen. And worshiping of angels. Worshiping of angels. That means they'll trick you. They'll make you believe you're following God, but you're really following some old ancient pagan religion, worshiping fallen angels, the gods of the Gentiles. And they'll trick you into believing it's the same belief and the same practices that the prophets did, that the disciples uh, were a part of, that Moses were, was a part of. So you have to be tricked because they, what they're trying to do is have you follow who? Even Lucifer. Satan appears as an angel of light. So it's an involuntary worshiping of angels. It's transferring the worship and admiration we should give to God only to do redirect it into following idols in the gods, the Gentiles. That's right. That the Gentiles worship within the earth. So you have to be careful. You have to be careful that it's in watch out for the involuntary worship of angels. Now the, and it says intruding into those things, which he have not seen vainly puffed up, by his fleshly mind, because this is what makes people believe they're deep. If they're bringing some high level spirituality outside of the simplicity that was taught in Christ, be very careful with word salad, how people try to make you believe they're deep in all that because you, that's right. You haven't learned the narrative and or the principles that have you, with the mind, brothers and sisters, to be able to discern. See? So how do you build that discernment? I'm going to talk about that in a second. Now, I'm going to give you an example. I'm an Israelite. I was excited. And I, listen, I'm not an Israelite according to religion. There is no such thing as being an Israelite or, or Israelite Hebrewism and all Israelism. It is no ism. We are the lost tribes of Israel. OK, now that in of itself, when I came into the truth of who I am. Still finding the truth, because you can know you're an Israelite and still not have Christ. All right. So that doesn't mean you're in the truth because you find out you're an Israelite. That's Christ putting you on the path to find him. Me becoming an Israelite was my path on that same road to Damascus where Christ would intervene and say, even though you know yourself, I'm about to show myself to you. I put you on the road to understand you are an Israelite, but you, but all of us must have that road, that, that road to Damascus intervention that Paul had. Because Paul thought that he had it all, being the son of a Pharisee, understanding the law, understanding the letter. But yet he was still destroying Christ's people. Why? Because that's right. He was under that involuntary worship of angels. That's right. He was under that old doctrine that have been hijacked by these other people and thought he was doing right. But at the same time, he was destroying Christ's church. Right. So I'm giving you some examples now. When I was a Hebrew, right. Or, well, I am a Hebrew. But when I first learned. Let me correct that. Right. We used to have a thing where at the end of every class. We would stand up. While the smoke and incense were, were, was going up and pray to the four winds of heaven we would turn around one side and and pray to the angels to, to either side i thought nothing of it i thought it was the regular thing to do it must be in the bible somewhere until i found out that the most high destroyed a king for doing the same thing 
worshiping angels. That's right. At the four winds of heaven. There was a king. That's right. In the Old Testament, the Most High took out for doing the same exact thing. Okay, that's involuntary worship of angels. The four winds work for Christ. They work for us. They minister unto us. We're not supposed to reverence them individually and, 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 and do prayer to them. But back then, I was so excited about me finding I was, an, I was an Israelite and this, that, and the other. I didn't realize that what? We were being taught to worship fallen deities. I went to a teacher one time and said, I love how you link up precepts. Even as I grew as an Israelite, I said, and, and I asked questions, how do I increase my connection, my spiritual connection with the Most High? And I had a high priest tell me, even though there's only one high priest now, anyone who say they're a high priest is a liar. Okay, Christ is our high priest. That's it. And he told me, take the six-pointed star, the star of David, he, called, he told me at that time, and place the, the six-pointed star at the four corners of my house. Everywhere... Every direction, put the six-pointed star. That's what he told me. And I'm like, what does that have to do with me studying and growing myself? But, you know, I end up forgetting, you know, I didn't do it because I thought it was weird. <laughs> right? I'm like, listen, I'm, I'm talking about how to connect according to the word. He says, take some six-pointed star and put it on the four corners of my house. Folks. I come to find out that's witchcraft. I come to find out also that the six pointed star isn't the star of David at all. It's the star of Moloch. It's connected with what? The God of Rimfam for child sacrifice. So even though I'm an Israelite out there on the corner, letting the Gentiles have it, speaking all truth of history and our people coming. And guess what? Let me tell you, I was very effective on those corners. OK, very effective. And, and you know what? I waited for someone to challenge my insight and understanding. So no one can tell me at this time, at that time, when that the same nonsense was going on. No one could tell me that this wasn't the truth I was a part of. And this is why I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, be very careful, because you don't know just because someone is speaking truth online. You don't know what backdoor ideology or religion or practices that are going on and you really don't know the right questions to ask anyway and I'm going to help you all today okay involuntary worshiping of angels okay and and I'm going to give y'all another example of that I'm going to give y'all another example of that right now you think it's a coincidence that all of a sudden East Indians are coming out of nowhere throughout the whole United States, landing smack dab in our communities. Hey, folks, guess what? They've been doing this stuff for a while. They, they was laying low. Okay, they used to operate on the outer skirts. There's whole towns with, with nothing but East Indians that none of you know about. I've, dri I've driven through some, right? But don't, don't forget, it was Islam who opened the lane for everyone else. We didn't question when they was setting up mosques in our community. We didn't realize it was divide and conquer. We didn't understand that it was involuntary worshiping of angels. Okay, that's right. Under Islam, they claim that that, Mo, that, that, that Muhammad, Muhammad was, had, had an interaction with an angel. See, see, how, see these things connect with Paul say you better watch out when they talk about this angel stuff. Involuntary worship of angels, folks. And I'm going to give you an example. Islam was the first one who opened the lane, but they had a plan. At the same time they were doing that, they were trying to stave us off, arrest us. They were trying to keep us from understanding who we were while incentivizing satanic evil religions against us behind our backs. 
under multiculturalism, they started financing these top druids, witchcraft, witches and warlocks to come into our community and to utterly spiritually decimate us under multiculturalism. Black and brown and all this minority when their plan was to decimate us. What? Spiritually. Get us out of this book. Now, I got folks, don't worry about it. Patreons, I'm going to be with you, but I want to talk about this. I'm going to show you how they did it. Involuntary worship of angels, fair use. One second here, fair use. Let me turn off the motion on this. This camera. Turn off the motion. Moving all around here. There it is. That, that's better. There. So let's go. I'm going to show you how they got us, folks. This is how they got us. Involuntary worship of angels. Here's another example of it. Fair use. Here's another example of involuntary worshiping of angels. Fair use. Hinduism is the ancient religion of India. It's the third largest religion in the world with over one billion followers. And the majority of Hindus... And this is educational purposes only. Fair use do live in India, which is the only Hindu majority country in the world. For many people, it's very difficult to understand what Hinduism is, because in so many ways, it is more like a disorganized religion than an organized religion. Hinduism has no founder. It has no common language, no common deity, no common scripture, no common ritual. Uh, all of the things that we think about when we think about bounded, organized religion. Most Hindus would believe that we all have a soul, and that soul is a reflection of God. So that individual soul that we all possess means that our natures are inherently divine, that we can know God by going inside of ourselves. Now, this all sounds good on the surface, right? Listen to this, this madness. For Hindus, the soul is reincarnated uh, over many lifetimes, and the goal of Hindu life is to achieve liberation from the cycle of rebirth, liberation from the cycle of suffering. For Hindus, it's not just that humans have a soul, but all sentient beings have a soul, including animals. So uh, in India, one will see the multiplicity of depictions of the divine. You will see the divine represented in animal form, for example. Fair use. One way to think about this notion of our souls being inherently divine is through the Hindu greeting of Namaste, which uh, is a traditional greeting in, in Now don't forget, Kamala Harris's mother, here it is. Yeah. And it literally means the divinity within me acknowledges and salutes the divinity within you. So in this simple greeting, we see a core Fair Hindu use. theological belief that's articulated. In the most ancient Hindu text, the Rig Veda, there is a verse that says, God is one, but the wise call God by many names. Or truth is one, but the wise call truth by many names. So built right into the heart of the tradition is this notion of pluralism. There is no way to convert to Hinduism. It's different strokes for different folks. Uh, when I was growing up as a Hindu, my parents would tell me there are many paths up the mountain, but they're all leading to the same place. And so uh, at its core, um, Hinduism has a great deal of respect for the other world. Many paths lead into the same place. Isn't that what Oprah said arguing with a Christian woman? Hmm, interesting religious traditions and recognizes them as equally legitimate paths to understanding ourselves and understanding God. Look at that. Hi, YouTubers. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Look at that. She came in initially with a predominantly black Christian backing and following. Even the movie she played in initially had a backdrop of slavery, Christian, the black church. 
switcheroo. Folks, this is where she was the whole time. They just needed to package it. In a package, our people would accept. And voluntary worshiping of angels. And involuntary means what? You begin to sway people strictly by pandering to their emotions. That's another way. Here she is. Now, what I want to show before I go to Patreon. Involuntary worshiping of angels. Hindus. Right? It all sounds good. The Vedas are made of the Red Vita, the Samavita, the Vajavita, the Atravita. Right? Let's go down here real quick. Let's go right down. Let's keep on going. Check this out. Hindus worship many gods. Gods and goddesses, folks, are, are names for angels, fallen angels. Hindus worship many gods and goddesses in addition to Brahman, who is believed to be the supreme god force present in all things. Some of the most prominent deities include, now Paul warned us, let no man beguile you or trick you into what? Voluntary humility of worshiping of angels. They will trick you into making you believe. It's the same, we're just doing it different. It's really the same Bible principles, but you know, we do it different over here. Liars. Folks, what we're seeing is act in actuality what satanic practices and religions that used to be backdoor amongst certain races of people being what? Being promoted in plain sight before the world. The worship of Satan is what we're seeing. Brahma, the God responsible for the creation of the world and all living things, liar. I'm going to show you who the, the, the God, I'm going to show you the God who created all things. Week one, the creation of the universe. You're a liar. Brahman didn't create a darn thing. Vishnu, the God that preserves and protects the universe. Shiva, the God that destroys the universe in order to recreate it. Devi, the goddess that fights to restore drama. Krishna, the God of compassion, tenderness, and love. And they try to lie and claim that Christ is just another variation of Krishna. Liar. Last me, the goddess of wealth and purity. Saraswati, the goddess of learning. Folks, these are all angels. Fallen angels worshipped outright within these Asian religions. Now, but I have a white paper that I'm going to go over soon. Sexuality and gender. White paper. I'm going to present this uh, uh, during the time of Sodom Watch of our academy this Sunday. Why is it that all of a sudden those that are within the LBGTQ community and others the majority of them choose Asian religions over their traditional Christian upbringing. I wonder why. Well, it says in Buddhism, more permissive, listen, more permissive about sex than Christianity. Sexuality and gender points out that contrary to popular belief, Buddhist societies tend to be conservative and even prudish. Marriage is seen as inferior to a life of celibacy. While Buddhism lacks the Christian focus on procreation, classical teachings reiterated by the Dalai Lama appear to favor reproductive over non-procreative sexual acts. Listen, homosexuality and transgenderism are not permitted by Buddhist teachings and are sometimes seen as a result of past lives, gender asserting itself in the present. Historically, the Buddhist approach to non-standard genders and sexual practices has been one of tolerance yet 
on acceptance. Several Buddhist communities and leaders have been associated with sex scandals in recent decades. No wonder one of the guys that uh, Oprah was championing for, for years, this so-called guru, I think, in California, <laughs> end up being this cult leader that was known for all types of perverted sexual activity but in evil, but yet Oprah was promoting this guy on, his, on her program as a spiritual leader. So it's all coming into view, folks. The worship of the Baphomet, the deity male and female, where you got what? The goat horn god. That's right, the Baphomet, Satan himself, sitting on a throne with a male body and what women, a woman's breasts. And now they're pushing the ideology to have transgenderism Transgenderism accepted as if it's something new, folks. No, this is the ancient Babylonian God and goddesses coming into view that will that was worshipped at the Tower of Babel. And guess what? The, the, this is your, your new minority in your countries now in the Western world. Right up under your nose, they took the schools and turned them to engineering and science. And instead of educating our people, they started bringing these people over with these core satanic beliefs and have put them over our community. They have placed them over every area of social structure to do what they have been planning to do against the children of Israel for years. So be careful about involuntary worshiping of angels. And they use our people to push it or to front it. They just use us as their mules. They use us as the face, knowing that they're tricking us. And that's why the Bible says, let no man beguile you or trick you. Hence the reason. Let me read this. So how do we avoid being tricked, right? Well, let's go to 1 John 4 and 1 real quick. 1 John 4 and 1. First of all, you have to look at those who are worshiping and dealing, dealing, who are operating against our core beliefs and traditions. We have to, you have to understand what an enemy of God looks like. Now, of course, you're not to uh, interject with them or try to do any harm to them, but you have to recognize they're not for your turn. They're enemies against our God, therefore become your enemies. And they're going to be putting all these areas of influence and power to eradicate, utterly destroy you. They're going to be put in it to doctor's positions, pharmacist positions. They're going to be put in school teacher positions with the same thought they had against you before they were let in. And believe it or not, eventually it's to move you out of the way and only to be replaced by their children, the Babylonians. Folks, the, those people I just showed you are Hamites. They're Cushites. They're from the same bloodline of Nimrod, the enemy of God. So Esau is saying, OK, you, you found us out. We've lied to you. Yeah, we know that you know that we're not Christ and Christ's people anymore. But now we have what? A secret weapon. We're going to bring in some black and brown people you'll trust. And they're going to do it even better than us because we've learned from them. Esau picked up his pagan satanic worships from the ancient Babylonians. They're just bringing the original people to the forefront to finish what they couldn't. First John four and one. Let's read it. First John four and one reads. Beloved, be not believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. And that's what I did. Even growing up and knowing I was in Hebrew and all that, I never stared away from the, the, the guidance and the direction of the Bible. 
When someone says some nonsense, I don't care how believable they were or what rank they were. I respected their rank, but you weren't going to have me go contrary to the Bible. When I seen the Bible says that he destroyed a king for, for praying to the four winds of heaven and voluntary worship of angels, I stopped turning around, worshiping the four corners. Okay, nix that. I don't care what your rank is. I don't care who you think you are in God. I'm not going to disrespect you. I'm not going to curse you out. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to respect your rank. If you tell me to do something for the embedment of me and my family and, you're, you're, and, and it's right according to the word, I'll listen. But you're not going to have me turn around and pray to angels. See? And that's why the Bible says, and a lot of brothers and sisters don't know, that th this practice isn't just Hebrews. Witches and warlocks does this. They do this. And a lot of our people learn, believe it or not, some Jewish mysticism that's mixed up in a lot of what we call Hebrew Israelites today. And you have no idea. So this is why Paul said. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So you got to know how they will this book and understand how to deal with these precepts so that you can be able to what? Filter everyone, anyone, through what the word of God says. Okay, anyone. And that's, that's what we're teaching people to do. That's what I, I'm saying. Listen, look at the doctrine we're teaching and see if it's not the doctrine that's contained in the Bible. Period. And do that for every, every, this is how you know you, you, you're in the right spot. Somebody come up some nonsense with a six pointed star and you know, it's the star of Moloch. They don't even that lets you know this person don't even have the the insight to actually Google the six pointed star. They're so close minded. And stubborn. Instead of admitting that they're wrong, they'll die on a satanic hill. Literally. You can Google the six pointed star and it'll tell you, you have nothing to do with David. But I digress. <laughs> beloved be, believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone into the world I'm going to show you how to identify that in a second hereby we know hereby know ye the spirit of God every spirit that confesseth that Christ is come in the flesh is of God you must confess that Christ came in the flesh. You can't be coming in, in. You can't be talking about Christ ideology, Christ theology. You must be able to break down how Christ came in the flesh, his bloodline. You have to break it all the way down and believe that he came like the Bible said he would come through the seed of David. Or you're dealing with involuntary worship of angels. Now. I'm going to go into the Eusebius and other works in the academy to prove Christ's fleshly bloodline. When you look right before Mary and Joseph, there's Mathan. There's Mathan. Who's that? Who's these men right before Christ was born? And it's going to rock, y'all. It's going to, folks, I got some books here. I got I even got the chronicles of the kings and queens of Great Britain. Wait till I show you what I have, folks. They knew who Christ's father was. But if they had but if they can take the father out, then they can go into deity worshiping of Babylon. And control the narrative by claiming that an angel came and slept with Mary or overshadowed Mary to bring forth Nephilim. The same thing that happened, Genesis 6, that led to the Most High destroying the earth through a flood. The celestial cannot deal with the terrestrial without judgment. You cannot come down and deal with a woman. It's against the laws of heaven. <laughs> Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come, is come in the flesh is of God. If you're trying to say he came some other way. You're dealing with involuntary worshiping of angels. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus come 
that Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Anyone that try to take out the father's bloodline that leads to promise connected to Christ, he's telling you this is who the Antichrist is. What people are pushing this? Wherefore, you have heard that it, it should come and even now is already in the world. So you waited for an Antichrist? Paul told you he was there already teaching the same ideology under Mithraism, the secret religion of the Romans. The virgin, the virgin mother, no, uh, uh, no father. That was the secret religion. That's the secret religion of the Jesuits. Mithraism that goes right back to the same people I showed you folks earlier. The Asian satanic religion that leads to the worships of the Baphomet. They hijack Christianity. And we're here to take it back, to actually bring forth the right Christianity before Constantine and others. And these evildoers led and paid for by the Roman Empire came in to destroy it. It's our only way out. You don't want to miss this academy, I'm going to tell you that. Last but not least, Hebrews 6. And guess what? Guess what? I'll tell you right now. I'm not dealing with an echo chamber. If any Hebrew or anyone else would like to challenge what I'm bringing forth from this Bible, I'm, I'm wide open for it. And understand, I'm not going to argue back and forth with you. I'm going to go straight into this Bible. And this, I'm going to show you where I'm going. So if you come to try to debate something, let me show you where I'm going. You, you might as well stay in your echo chamber under your, decept, under your deception. Because you can't answer what, what Christ and the disciples were throwing back at Pharisee. They came to ask Christ a question. Let me show you. Let me show you. They came to ask Christ a question. Let me show you the question they came to try to, 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 try to cause some conflict. Right? Listen. I'm going to give them something that they can look at real quick. Right? Right? Let me show you. Let me pull it up real quick. Right? So when the Pharisees came up to Christ, right? They had a lot of questions. Check out their questions, brothers and sisters. <laughs> They're challenging. They, they went to challenge the authority of Christ. Mark eleven twenty seven. And they come to Jerusalem, and as he was walking to the temple, there come to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now, these were the people who, in high positions as Hebrews, folks, and they come to speak to Christ. And he said unto him, and, and he said unto, unto him, by what authority do thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do this? He's like, you're not down with us. You're not under the authority of the temple. Who gave you the authority to do things outside of us, right? And look what Yeshua says, Christ. And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will ask you one question and answer me. And I will tell you by what authority I do these things. I'll answer any question you want. Right. But you have to answer my question first. That's what Christ says. I'll tell you who gave me the authority. If you can answer this one question, check out this question, folks. He goes straight to the baptism. The baptism of John. Was it from heaven? Or. Of men. Answer me. <laughs> answer me so Christ wasn't playing around with them 
He wanted to show the people out there that, guess what? You can point out a liar and a deceiver with one question. The baptism of John, was that of heaven? Did God send that? Or was it, or you're going to put it on John doing something separate that have nothing to do with God's mission for the path of Christ's kingdom. For the path for Christ's kingdom. Now, if they say it was from heaven, right, then they'll have to admit and, and, and talk to the people in their congregation to why they didn't baptize claiming to follow Christ. If you're down with the Most High and you announce saying that the baptism was of God, now you have to tell others why you didn't do it when Christ did it. See, this is how you try the spirit to know that and, and know that you're dealing with a deceiver, false prophet, and or liar. See? So let me go back. <laughs> Let's go back. And that's why if anybody come at me, I'm going to go straight here. Because I don't got no time to be debating going back and forth because we all believe in slave ships. We all believe that we Hebrews. We all believe all this other stuff. Let's go here. Because we all claim to be following or haven't, or we all claim to have the true doctrine of Christ. The baptism, Christ asked these leaders, these elders, these scribes. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. Now check this out. This is with their answer. And they reasoned with themselves. See, they wanted some old scripture debate on the law and who's doing it right and who's. No, Christ hit him at the juggler. While everyone was watching. Because these were the same people who denied the baptism of Christ. These are the same people who rejected John and John reprimanded them and saying, listen, this is the only way into Christ's into, I'm coming to lead the way for the king that was prophesied. The king you claim to be waiting for. Now you're going to question his authority. He went straight to the baptism. Folks, this is how you try the spirit when it comes to any Hebrew or anybody else. Ask them what their thought is on the baptism. Not just the baptism of John, but why Christ was baptized. And why is it that if you claim to follow Christ, you're denying his baptism? Don't let them try to trick you into believing and try to, get, try to go into a Christian conversation. Well, Christians, no, I'm going to do with the Christians. We know Christians are pagan. We're not going there. Let's go to Christ. Why should I trust anything you say denying the baptism of Christ? And they reasoned with themselves saying, if, if we say from heaven, he will say, why then did ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people because people loved John. They knew he was a man of the most high. For all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto Yeshua, we don't know. We cannot tell. We don't know if the baptism came from heaven or of men. Playing it safe. So when they dance around the baptism, folks, y'all go right here to Mark the 11th chapter. This destroy because if you're not dealing with the baptism of Christ, I don't care how many how many people in your group, I don't care how much you're teaching, you are an antichrist. That was the clear distinction before the world to show others who would come in the last days who is teaching the doctrine of Christ. It was a clear sign before all men. 
And they answered and said unto Yeshua, we cannot tell. Plausible deniability. And Yeshua answered and said unto them, neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Christ was like, get out of my face. Y'all not down with the kingdom. Y'all just dealing with the authority and the position in a proud manner to claim to be Hebrew. Huh? Huh? So that, that's why I can open it. Like you can say whatever you want because I'll stick with the scriptures. If you try to dance around and try to claim that baptism is reading the word or following the law, listen, you'd be better off doing what the, 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 the scribes did right here and say, well, I don't know. Don't make yourself a liar. And that leads me, that leaves me to Hebrews, the sixth chapter. How do we try this spirit to know if it's of the most high? Well, Hebrews 6 tell us this. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, which means the disciples, when they set up churches as apostles, right? They left. They left a foundation. Of what? Doctrinal necessities. Doctrinal necessities. You cannot have a church unless these particular tenets were left at each place the disciples would establish churches. So leaving doesn't mean walking away. This is what the apostles left every area they set up. A church that would lead people towards Christ's kingdom. They would leave these principles that were given to them by Christ himself. Let us go on unto perfection. This is the perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. So we're not going to do this strictly as repetition under Moses like we did before Christ came. It became vain repetition. We were just, we were just following, you know, we were just following the, you know, from one year to the next without it meaning anything. It became no different than us following Christmas now. It became vain repetition. Oh, it's Passover. Oh, and, it, and it didn't mean anything anymore. Because even though we followed those holy days, our people still fell and eventually went into captivity. There must have been something else missing. A key component that even Moses didn't have. Christ brought it. So we can't just tell people to follow the law because it didn't work for our forefathers. They still fell and we went into captivity. We're still suffering from the sins of our forefathers who had the law. So there must be something else. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. So what shall we leave for each church? The disciples knew. They knew we need to read. They would, they would leave this, set up a church, and they would do what? Of the doctrine of baptism. They must leave that in every place they establish a church because that's an individual facing their sins, humbly asking the Most High to forgive their past sins, to give them what? A gift of the Holy Spirit to lead them towards Christ's kingdom. The Holy Spirit is what transforms that man inside out. This is how you get a resurrected body because you must, you must first admit that you are a sinner. The doctrine. So there's a doctrine attached to baptism. It isn't you just being ducked, dunked in water. There's a doctrine that comes with this on how to be afterwards and what that and what that means to Christ's baptism. There's a whole doctrine on this. And you have people only to dismiss Christ by downplaying its importance, claiming that baptism is reading a book. 
or reading the law. They're liars. This is how you try the spirit. You have to find out whether or not this particular person, who, whoever they are, are leaving in each church they are the baptism that Christ established after John. Number one. Next. And the laying on of hands. What is the laying on of hands? The laying on of hands is the appointments and offices that's, that, that we can find in the churches established by the disciples. Which means there is no generals. There is no high priest. None of that. Okay. You can't find that in the churches P Peter set up. So when you lay, lay, lay hands or appoint people, you must appoint them in the administration that was established under Christ. That's number two. Three, the resurrection of the dead. Now, why is this so important? Because what? Hell is a real place. Spirits are held in the middle of the earth, be it whether or not it's what? The bosom of Abraham or hell itself. Which is torment, which was the original what? Prison for the fallen angels who disobeyed during the time of Enoch. So we must teach the truth of resurrection because Christ went into that area three days and three nights in the belly of the earth to take that to take power that Satan had over that realm to one day release the souls back in the earth into our realm for the final judgment. When he come, the righteous will empty the bosom of Abraham. That's the resurrection. That all the righteous look forward to seeing the saints who have passed. Seeing the new form of our family members, because what the most high spirit is within within all of us. There's no such thing as dying permanently. Your spirit passes from heaven into earth. Then it passes into, that's right, after death, from earth into a resting place. Hades or the bosom of Abraham. So if you're teaching people there is no hell, how can you teach the resurrection? You got people teaching that the resurrection is when you found out you were an Israelite again. You resurrected. Nonsense. Resurrection is what Christ did when he was in the earth, dead for three days. It's what happened during the week before Christ died. When Lazarus' body was stinking in the grave and eventually the week leading up to the Passover, Lazarus was sitting down at meat with Christ. This is talking about having the power to release the souls from the past that have died. That's, resur that's true resurrection. And you cannot get that spirit unless you receive this, the Holy Spirit through baptism first. You will not live again if you deny the baptism of Christ. Because even Christ told Nicodemus, he told him straight out, unless you be born of the water and the spirit, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus was a what? High priest who knew the law. Resurrection of the dead and what? And eternal judgment. All of these principles I've just broken down must be left. You have these principles in a church. That's a true church according to Christ. Period. The offices that the disciples set up, the baptism first and foremost, and the offices, be it elder, deacon, bishop, whatever the case is. These are the offices that were set up that distinguished, delineated the Hebrews who were in Christ from other Hebrews that were out there. 
You have to make sure you keep the Sabbaths. Make sure you keep the holy days because the disciples kept the Sabbaths and holy days. And I'm going to prove that too. When I go into modern day Christianity within this particular, guess what? They burned, they burned one of the key bishops at, at the stake because he didn't want to include the pagan Easter and all this stuff the Romans were trying to bribe our teachers to do. And they killed the man for standing up for the Passover. The church is supposed to keep the Passover. That's the memorial and remembrance of Christ's death. And guess what? It's, you cannot really keep the Passover if you don't follow Sabbaths. Because the Passover falls on what? A Sabbath every year. And eternal judgment. What does it mean, eternal judgment? Well, this is what it means, brothers and sisters. Eternal judgment is the final judgment. When the fallen angels who the Hindus and others and the Esau and the pagan idolaters and even Islam, they are pagans too. This is when our God judges the gods they worship. The final judgment is when our God sent Christ to judge the fallen gods that have destroyed us within modern day religion. Okay, I'm about to go over into Patreon. Let me give you the announcement for the Hebrew and Bible Academy for those who would like to be a part of that. It starts Sunday, October 1st. Exposing the dark forces of witchcraft. I'm going to go into week two with tracing the serpent seed. The power of praying and fasting. How to do it. How did Christ teach taught? How did he teach us to fast and pray? We're going to use him as the, the example. That's going to be a week 12 teaching when I go into who's Christ. Fasting and praying. And how did the disciples fast and pray? We're going to break it down. How to connect to the father. Even when the book is closed, there's ways of fasting and praying in order to do what? Connect with the Father. And when you connect with him, you open up that book, and now the word is just flowing for you, right? We're going to go into that, right? One other thing here. Let me go over these real quick before I open up the phone calls. Man's purpose, God's wisdom intended for man, okay? Man, let me tell you, man, man wasn't created to follow women. Men were put here to become the authority and judge for God. That's right. Men, a man's purpose isn't to follow a woman. If you're doing all these other things and accolades and getting yourself together, and your mindset is so that you can get a woman. Rethink that again. You're supposed to get yourself together for your purpose, your, your, your purpose that's just beyond your life. It's why the most high established Adam. Because if you do that, having a woman is a given. Once you succeed in the area that God needs you to succeed in, <laughs> you. you you're going to be able to choose the woman that's right for you. So doing something to get a woman is, 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 is behind backward. It's, behind, it's, it's, it's backward as, we, as I don't know what, okay? When Adam woke up, there was Eve, who the Most High took from him, laying next to him, okay? He wasn't searching for anybody. The Most High put her there. It wasn't Eve who was here, and then the Most High gave man to go follow and try to find out where Eve was. That's backward. That's a weak, weak nature. And we're going to go into that. Uh, man's purpose, according to the Most High's wisdom. And I'm going to also include seven of the 50 biblical laws of power, which is just the biblical laws of wisdom, to apply for these men. Seven that I'm doing, I'm doing the whole 50, but I'm going to do seven in the academy, and I'm going to let the brothers know 
This is what you must apply. And guess what? Sis is going to be able to apply those laws too. But all in all, when I focus on the man's part, I'm going to give you all the seven, the seven laws of wisdom because there's a lot of men walking around in this earth without fathers. And because of that, they have taken on the nature of what? Their mother. It's unfortunate. They took, they've taken on that nature. And they, and they deal with conflict resolution through their emotions. Well, if you got the wisdom that Solomon had, that can actually supplement or be there as a guide to fix that. So now you deal with things, you deal with issues logically according to your wisdom and not your what? Carnal emotions. Okay? Women are different. <laughs> the Bible tells you that women sorrows will be multiplied. So sometimes women go through all types of emotions to come to solution. That works for her. But no, that's an uncomely behavior for a man. A man is not going to supposed to go irate in his emotions to come to a conclusion. That's the nature of a woman. And, it's, it's, and guess what? It's not her fault. Women will cry and go through all that, but they're just trying to go to get to solution. And sometimes it works for them. They cry, they go through certain things, and then other people come in and help because they understand what? She's like a damsel in distress. And this is how women have learned to do what? To receive answers, to get the outcome they want. They want. That's a woman. That's a very negative behavior for a man and you've seen your mother do it growing up and you thought it was natural no it's not natural for a man there's nothing like a crying begging and and a, a man operating like a woman when it comes to conflict and solution usually a man who's solving problems you don't even know it because he's silent he's thinking He's thinking before he's acting. And I'm going to go into that. Man's purpose, God's wisdom intended for man. The purpose of a woman, the Holy Spirit. How to apply the law of Moses through Christ. Because you have even Hebrews and those in Judaism. Y'all got that backward. You can't just say follow the law, follow the law, and not understand that the law must be followed through Christ. The Christians got it wrong because they think grace means not following the law at all. That's where the, the modern day Christians are wrong. They think grace means I'm sinning. Let me sin on purpose and Christ will cover that. Well, we're going to fix all that. Christians are wrong and even Hebrews are wrong when it comes to this. Even those in Judaism are wrong. You must understand the law through Christ. And I'm going there. That and more in the next Hebrew and Bible Academy. And we're going to jump right in week one with teaching brothers and sisters on how to link those precepts. Now, what am I talking about today? Today on Patreon. Well, let me show you one, one of the most dangerous. One, as far as society is concerned. One of the most dangerous black, black women on earth. One of the most dangerous black women, excuse me, on earth. Dangerous. I mean, the powers that be can't stand this woman. Folks, and I'm not talking about Candace Owen. I'm talking about this sister right here. Dr. Stella Emanuel. Let me go there again. Dr. S Stella Emanuel. Throw Oprah out. Don't, let me tell you. Health, faith, freedom. This sister is who the world power who's trying to push stuff against our sisters they can, against our families. This woman is a eugenics stopper. 
This woman right here is a eugenics stopper. She understand eugenics. She understand how they was targeting our people and they, how they're going to make us sick and all that. Let me tell you. And she and her health tips are absolutely amazing. Well, we're going to talk about her before opening up the phone calls. On Patreon, OK, you can be a loyal Patreon member, folks. It's only what? Five dollars monthly is very cheap. Uh, go to Patreon forward slash a gathering one four four. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for holding out while I was dealing with my respite for almost a month, being in the seventh month with tabernacles and everything else. Thank you for that. But I'm back on the horse today. We're going to open up the phone calls and get ready for this Sabbath. But I'm going to jump right in to Patreon. Thank you, loyal Patreonies. We're going to talk about this and then open up the calls like we do before every academy, it's what? It's time to ask the elders. Call us, 515-605-9327. I'm jumping right in to the phone calls right now. Our loyal Patreonies, let's go. <laughs> let's go. All right, with that, I'll see you all tomorrow for the Sabbath lesson. May the Most High be with you. Stay prayed up. Sin not. We will soon see Israel. And my loyal Patreones, let's go. <laughs> let's go over to Patreon and, and you know, and, and have a little conversation. Again, again, go to historytimes.org to enroll. A matter of fact, uh, we extended the enrollment, so... You all can get in. It's very cheap to get into the academy, okay? We have 12 weeks of serious information. Be there this Sunday, 9 a.m. Elder Lawyer, we have, we have, we have uh, reconstructed the Hebrew for conversational Hebrew to the next level. Brand new PDFs for that. We also have the new Shapatis flying in from over Europe. So we're going to have some real, real detailed information that all of us must understand, knowing that the news in America is very closed. Geopolitically, people rarely understand what's really going on on the outside of America. So we're going to talk about that in our news. And also, I got the white papers that I'm going to break down when it comes to Hinduism, the LBGTQ uh, uh, agenda, or whatever, the L LG LBGTQ, whatever letter groups, how that's attached to ancient Babylonian Hinduism and the worship of gods and goddesses. I'm going to be talking about that. And above all, when I go into the breakdown of the creation of the universe, we're going to show brothers and sisters the ranking angels. What are the orders of the angels? And it's best we know about that on our side. OK, so we know who Christ is utilizing to fight the dark forces for us on this side. We don't pray to these angels individually. But it's best to know who's working for us in the invisible. We pray, we pray to the Most High in the name of Christ, through the Holy Spirit. And guess what? Our God charges the angelic host to fight our battles. And it's best you understand this because witches and warlocks secretly pray to dark angels against us. They know exactly who to call on against us. But we don't even understand when we call on Christ. Who, he, who is he using in the earth to fight their demons? Well, that and more, because this academy will be solely focused on spiritual growth. Every lesson will have what? A spiritual component for application and how to grow in the spirit. Israelites, come on in. Even Gentiles, come on in. OK, go to HistoryTimes.org. My Patreon -y members are waiting. I'm going to only be on for one hour Patreon. So stick with me. 515-605-9327. Come on over and let's have a conversation on Patreon. And I'm going to talk about this sister. Who deals with strictly health. And this sister is amazing. Not only does she believe in Christ, but she 
she know about the herbs the Most High made from the beginning for healing. She even came up with packages and all of that to help people restore their bodies who, who went and got that stuff ill-advised years ago. That and more. Patreon, let's go. Shalom. is where we're from the 12 tribes of Israel in 721 BC the Assyrian king he took us down we fell <laughs> with the great escape we went through the Euphrates the Lord held the water still To a land where no mankind dwelt, we went. The twelve tribes of Israel. That's who we be, we be. Manasseh, the Cubans, Ephraim from Puerto Rico, and Bali from the arms of Hawaii. The Lord is calling back Israel. Zebulon from Panama, Cat, the North American Indians, Simeon. The highest gathering is Israel. The Arabs and Africans told us. At good point. Together our wives and children then sold us. In the belly of these great ships we traveled in fear. By the rivers of Babylon we found our brothers here. A high gathering in Colombia. Australia, Issachar, the Mexicans, from the far 